Hi everybody. This lesson is going to focus on the Northern Renaissance and the ways in which it was different than the Italian Renaissance as well as important people and ideas that came from this movement. Our objective is to contrast Northern Renaissance art and literature with Italian Renaissance art and literature. And the primary way in which it was different was that the Northern Renaissance emphasized Christian humanism. Christian humanism as a movement emphasized early church writings that provided answers on how to improve society and reform the church. A lot less emphasis on the uh, pagan works from ancient Greece and Rome, although they were widely read and enjoyed by Christian humanists. Um, there was, you know, drew on Hebrew and Greek texts of the Bible and the writings of the church fathers. It emphasized education and power of human intellect to write, to bring about institutional change and moral improvement. The condition of the church was just awful during this time period. And most Christian humanists really wanted to improve that condition. And as a result, Christian humanist writings led to criticism of the church, thus leading to the Protestant Reformation. The most famous of the Christian humanist writers, of course, was Desiderius Erasmus. Um, most you know celebrated of all northern humanists and you know he was really one of the first humanists to just earn a living by writing which is an extremely impressive achievement for this time period he was a master of the greek language he made new translations of the greek and latin version of the new testament to make create pure editions and his most famous work was in praise of folly um, it was actually the number two bestseller during the 1500s only the bible sold more it was written in latin Thus, it was not intended for mass consumption. Um, and Erasmus himself was a devout Catholic. Uh, you know, he wanted to reform the church, not destroy it. And in Praise of Folly, he satirized people's worldly ambitions, and ambitions, including the clergy. He criticized the immorality and hypocrisy of church leaders and the clergy. And the book inspired renewed calls for reform and ultimately influenced Martin Luther. And thus, you know, many contemporaries actually claim that Erasmus laid the leg that Luther hatched regarding the Reformation, a topic we'll talk about later in this unit. A second example, um, and a prime example of a civic humanist as well as Christian humanist, was Sir Thomas More uh, from England. And he rose to the highest government position of any humanist, Lord Chancellor to King Henry VIII. And his humanistic masterpiece is written in 1516 was Utopia. Uh, Utopia uh, mixes the civic humanism with the religious ideal to describe this perfect society located on an imaginary island. Uh, Moore sees the accumulation of property as a root cause for society's ills. You know, very few have it, most don't. And in Utopia, he kind of makes the point in order to achieve harmony and order, people have to be willing to sacrifice their individual rights for the common good. Um, you know, in, in this utopian community, this fictional community, there is war, poverty, religious intolerance. Other problems of the early 16th century do not exist. And it's interesting because Moore himself was actually not a very religiously tolerant person. Uh, in fact, he was really what we would probably call the Grand Inquisitor uh, while England was still Catholic in the court of Henry VIII. Uh, he persecuted Protestants intensely. And when Henry switched to Protestantism, he actually chose to be executed rather than go with Henry. So despite this ideal society not having to deal with religious, you know, intolerance, this, you know, Moore himself was religiously, he was Catholic, devout, as most Christian humanists were, wanted reform for the church, not a new church. Regarding uh, art and architecture, um, the, the Low Countries, um, you know, Netherlands, Bel modern day Netherlands and Belgium, you know, were heavily influenced by the Italian Renaissance and they produced especially important artists. And their early works were much more religious than the Italians and less influenced by classical themes and motifs. Uh, however, later works after the Reformation were not very religious. And part of that was that after the Reformation, the many Protestants did not agree, agree with the idea of icons and churches. And so the church was not really a sponsor for Northern Renaissance Christian works, the churches that were Protestant. And so we don't see much of that, but early on it was very religious because remember the movement itself was religious. Um, the 
a lot more minute detail throughout the paintings uh, than some of the Italian Renaissance in the background. And also, this was the first use of oil paints in contrast to, you know, the Italian Renaissance that used tempera paints. A little more emotional than Italian style. Uh, many of the works were preoccupied with deaths, and a lot of the works just basically were naturalists. They looked at everyday life and all that was going on. Uh, Christian Northern Renaissance artists are Van Eyck, Dura, and Peter Bruegel the Elder. And for your benefit, really, you just need to know one of these three. Um, although I'll show you some paint, uh, some works from each. And so his most famous piece, the you know the 15th century Ghent altarpiece. Van Eyck was known for perfecting the oil painting. Uh, he used naturalistic wood panels, um, a lot of religious symbolism. You know, employed you know great detail in his works. Durer, and probably the foremost Northern Renaissance artist, uh, he was a master of the woodcut, which is um, kind of a print that you could print up quickly. We'll see a lot of them used as well. This is an example of a woodcut here. And uh, he was really one of the first Northerners to master the Italian Renaissance techniques of proportion and perspective, and painted numerous self-portraits as well. This is one of his uh, works in everyday life, just the walk. The Adoration of the Magi. Royal the Elder, who seems to me to be the one that the college board loves the most when printing out tests. Uh, you see a lot of him. Um, his works focus more on the lives of ordinary people. Uh, this is uh, an example. This is just peasant wedding. Um, and you kind of just see the, the festivities in a small village. Uh, he wasn't as influenced by the Italian Renaissance as some of the other Northern Renaissance um, Hunters in the Snow. That is it for this very short lesson. And take care.